At a recent flea market I spotted this metal box and the badge on the front gives a fair clue as to what's inside. So I opened it up and inside is a more or less complete 1915 primer stove model 210. You've got the main body of the stove and you've got the burner unit complete with its flame spreader ring. You've got the three metal rods that form the pot stand and you've got a folding metal windshield to go round the burner during preheating. You've got a spanner to tighten the burner onto the main body and you've got a folding jet unblocking tool just there. And then there's this rather nice triangular shaped tin for holding the paraffin. There would have also been a smaller triangular shaped tin for holding the methylated spirits for preheating but that's missing. And then we've got this nice tin with some spare parts in it. And finally we've got a bike adjusting spanner that has no place in this kit. There were a couple of things to fix. The early versions of this stove have a lead washer to seal the burner down to the stove body and that was missing. You can buy these online but it was easy enough to fabricate one out of an old sheet of lead flashing. Additionally the pump washer was worn out and needed to be replaced. Rather handily there were some spares of those in the little metal box. At the same time I noticed that at some time in the past someone had fitted a washer to eliminate the slop of the pump washer housing. But that slop's actually meant to be there because when you press the plunger in it's meant to seal against the taper on the shaft and then when you pull the plunger back out the body should move away from that to allow air pa to pass through so you can withdraw the plunger. So now I think it's time to head out into the wilds and try the stove out. Once you've trekked through the wilderness for hours and hours and finally made it to your campsite you might be in just the right mood for a hot beverage so it's probably time to set up the stove. This looks like a good spot, the ground is relatively level and it's always good to get that weight off your shoulders. If you can find anything stable to place the stove on then that's all the better. I found this slice of tree trunk which will do nicely. So we'll get the metal box out and begin assembling the stove. Starting with the main stove body which we'll place on our stable surface thusly. Remove the tank cap placing it on the threaded storage stud for safe keeping. Now we can screw on the burner assembly, giving it just a gentle tweak with the spanner to seal the joint. Place the three bent metal rods that form the pot stand into the lugs around the perimeter of the tank. And now we can add some fuel. This stove uses paraffin or kerosene which is pretty widely available. I haven't timed it but you should be able to heat a good few pans of water on one tank. Screw the cap back on and check that the vent screw is loose. We're all set ready for preheating the burner now. So pour some methylated spirits into the meths cup and place the folding metal windshield round the burner. Grab your box of matches and light the meths. It takes about a couple of minutes to heat the burner Keep an eye on the meths and when it's nearly all burnt close the vent screw and give it a few pumps and with a bit of luck the burner should roar into life. You can leave the windshield in place but I usually move it out of the way once we're up and running. Once everything is up to temperature it should burn with a pretty clean blue flame with very little evidence of yellow colour. So now the stove is up to temperature it's time to prepare our drink. I like coffee and it would be all too easy to make instant but proper ground coffee is just nicer and as we've walked all this way carrying all that weight I think we deserve the best. 
so I'll pop some water in the pan and start it heating. It'll take a few minutes to boil, which will give me time to dig out the rest of the necessary equipment, like the cafetiere, and of course the grumpy tin mug, and a teaspoon. And another thing to remember if you're out in the wilds camping, always be on the lookout for wild animals that might leap out of the undergrowth at any moment. That was a lucky escape. Anyway, back to the job in hand. I'll pop some pre-ground coffee into the cafetiere, and I'm sure James Hoffman would be horrified at my coffee brewing method, but I guess it's relatively unlikely that he'll see this video, so I'll probably get away with it. It's heating up nicely now, and the flame is relatively clean, albeit with a bit of yellow at the tip. That should be plenty warm enough, so to stop the stove, you simply undo the vent screw, which releases the pressure in the tank, and the stove goes out. Like that. I'm getting quite thirsty now, and have you ever noticed how much better food or drink tastes when it's cooked outdoors? So I'll pour on the water, give it a stir, and let it brew for a minute or two. OK, that's long enough. Time to pop in the plunger and plunge. This is going to be so good. The way these stoves work is pretty simple, and it's more or less the same as the blowtorch I featured in a previous video. I'll put a link to that video on screen about now. Once the burner has been preheated, the pressurised fuel comes up from the tank, passing through these two pipes into the hot metal section at the top, where it is vaporised into a gas. The gas then passes back down the other pair of pipes, exiting through the replaceable jet here. The jet of gas sprays into the combustion area, where it's directed towards the pan by the flame spreader ring. And of course, that combustion of gas also keeps the burner assembly hot in order to continue vaporising the fuel. I think that will probably do for this video. If you've enjoyed watching, please like the video and maybe even subscribe to the channel. And don't forget to click on the bell icon so you get notifications when future videos are released. That's it for now, so thanks for watching and I'll see you in a future video.